I'm Mark from KW Management out of Nashville, New Hampshire, and what we're looking at here is a uh, Spire Solar 84 cell 40 watt module from the 80s. Um, it's still capable of producing power. Uh, it's got a real cool pattern on the circuitry here and the structure. Was this was this module placed in service at all? Or was no, it was a test of, module. Yeah. Part of a, a test module. We started installing modules in 1998, so 22 years ago. Um, right before Y2K. When did you get your first license in New Hampshire for as an electrician? Oh, <laughs> 1872. No, it's a, <laughs> it actually is 1984. Are you aware of any other uh, contractors in New Hampshire that, that got you beat by a couple of years? Uh, not doing solar, not that not, I'm aware of. Yeah. Now, at, that, at that point in 98, uh, there wasn't too many electricians in New England doing solar. It was uh, right. more of a specialty profession. Right around here. And the voltage as well, which you can see here. Again, what is the wattage of this module? It's a 40 watt module. So there's a serial number, number six, and it's a thousand volts. It's a full frame, yeah. 17 cells, yeah. if not more, probably yeah. close yeah. to 40, 50 pounds. Custom aluminum frame, spot welded. You wouldn't happen to remember at the time what their warranties were, were you by any chance? Yeah, not really. <laughs> What, and uh, on some of these early systems, what, what did you use for racking? Did you create your own rack? It's yeah. mostly created on rack and used uh, aluminum uh, angle uh, pieces with uh, L feet. L feet were, were a product that was available at the time. And then wiring was done with a uh, um, uh, USC cable and uh, MC connectors, but they're awesome. the early version of the pins. You should open up a, a museum. Yeah. Let's grab another one, shall we? Um, this is a, let's see, a 108 cell, 40, uh, serial number 42, manufactured in 1988. Mm -hmm. um, another real cool circuiting pattern in the cell itself. Um, you can see it's starting to lose some of the uh, area, the cross section, to uh, um, just junctions and such. Uh, 1982, so this is one of your older girls. Um, older than most people watching this YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, know if we've actually tested this one. But uh, um, still good. Yeah. When you installed your first systems in New England in the late 90s, were those mostly all residentials or were you getting some commercials? So there was residentials and then there was some small commercials on uh, schools. Uh, we did Solarized Schools program in uh, 99. The, the evolution kind of went jump from there right into this. I think this is a Solar X, which started really going into the square cells. Um, what's that? This is. The, the age of this is, but this is then, you know, you're getting up to uh, um, an MX60. This is a 60 watt 36 cell module. Mm -hmm. This one has, uh, it's kind of came through its, with this test sheet with a bunch of other uh, tests that were performed on it by uh, um, NREL. You know, how it performed back then. It would be interesting actually to put this through a test again to see what yeah, the... Yeah, flash test. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see how it performs. Yep, yeah, and that's what Spire was, was famous for, was their flash uh, uh, test. Equipment. Where was Spire, where was Spire based? Where were they doing their manufacturing? I think down in Burlington. Um, Burlington, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh -huh. Clear um, examples of that, and I maybe can turn it on the side here. But this is a polycrystalline module here. Um, it's very similar to what you'd see with an Evergreen product. Um, just you can see the the different hues of that blue crystal, um, and that kind of gives away whether it's poly or mono. Mono, you're going to see. In the backdrop, you can see a mono um, crystalline module that uh, that's a uh, um, called in a, a, a Clipsol 245 watt 60 cell module. Okay. But uh, the mono crystalline products typically are a single color brown, um, perform slightly better than polycrystalline. Uh, but this this is a dead giveaway. What year was this module here? I'm thinking this module is probably early 2000s. Okay. Uh, in this case here, they've actually got the data, all these others, which were, because they're mostly test platforms, this would have been something that could have been commercially produced, but there wasn't a lot of guidance, so um, we just have to follow all the other codes, whether it was running conduit, installing wires in conduit, with how many wires, how big the wires were, and um, then that's when the source circuit combiners started coming out in the early 2000s. These would be palletized and sent to your sites? Oh yeah, 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 we have pallets and uh, obviously the shipping costs were a little different then, but uh, yeah. um, you know, there wasn't as much of a drive to get you know, as much into a container as possible at that time. Well, this, this starts probably in the, uh, um, eight, yeah, say eight to 10. Eight to 10 bucks per yeah, watt. Per watt, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's now, we have, you know, as you know, pricing of systems has come down significantly in modules have come from you know 20 to 12 to, to 6 and then they went yeah. to 4 
at the threes, and then we never thought we'd hit two dollars, and then it was a dollar fifty, and then it was a dollar, and now it's you know going down from there. In, in addition to the racking systems becoming much more installer friendly and complete, yeah. with the least amount of screws, code compliant grounding. Um, back when you installed these, you would have to have a ground to each module because none of the racking was UL listed as a uh, ground compatible. So you'd have a grounding lugs and, and copper wire having to run in between all the modules, which when you're modulizing a, a roof of the four at a time, you'd have to have this all pre-wired, carried up to the roof, cool. and then tie it into with the next set of, of uh, modules. This strange, another anomaly on the, the, the cell structure. Um, this is, um, I would say, the Spire, uh, which was uh, shipped through NREL. Um, 1999. 1999, which starting to look Long more. Earlier, this is the brand name or for this particular product? Uh, well, actually, I think this was intended, it says, I think it's intended to be shipped um, to Mongolia for the Post and Telecommunications Authority. Oh, okay. So this, so this, this is a module. Sent to Asia. Yeah, this was sent to Asia from okay. here. You know, we're looking into more of a four inch by four inch cell structure with some very unusual looking patterns on the circuitry, um, which again, it looks, you know, pretty artsy to me anyways. Um, and it, this is again, polycrystalline cells. Um, so it's a, a, a good example of transitioning from the very small two and a half, three inch cells down to uh, up to four inch, then five inch, then six inch. So this, this that's, that's a newer module. Like I said, it's probably eight years old. Um, this is a uh, version of a unisolar product. Um, it's got, uh, um, you know, uh, aluminum frame, same type, but it's more of a rubberized coating here. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, sort of yeah, yeah, that's, and, and it's, uh, um, and this is a whopping 22 watts of output. <laughs> the other one that you're standing in front of there, that's, that's a, uh, um, a Spire 36 cell that was actually from 1986. Um, you see a lot of wasted real estate here mm -hmm. uh, just to get the cells uh, separated. Um, yeah, this, yeah. Is a, this is a mono, obviously. Mono, yeah. Yeah, okay. And that was basically some of the first rounds were mostly all monos in the 80s. Right, right, with different uh, you know characteristics to the, uh, the uh, physical characteristics of the cell. Awesome. Um, well, thanks everybody for joining. We appreciate tuning in to uh, the one, the only, KW Management, actually officially the first solar contractor in New Hampshire and one of the early ones in New England. That's a wrap. Bye, everybody. Bye.